welcome, welcome, welcome. In this short tutorial, I'm going to explain different ways of reading and writing variables from MATLAB and what the different pros and cons are. This is by no means exhaustive. So, a common task whenever you are running a scripting language is the need to read in data. MATLAB actually allows you to do this in kind of two primary ways. I would say that probably half the time my data is in what's called comma separated value format that is a table where each entry in the table is separated by either a column or a tab or a space or alternatively I've saved it in MATLAB's proprietary format so let's begin by looking at MATLAB's proprietary format for this script on screen I have a simple uh, uh, scripting workspace so let's create a couple of variables that we'd like to study for example, I might have uh, a value x, which will be a string. Uh, we'll even call it strx. Uh, we'll have an integer I'll call y, which will have the value of 5. So if I run these two, you see they are saved in the workspace as two separate values. So if I wanted to just save these two values, probably the easiest thing to do is just to save the entire workspace. If I do this, I can use the save command in MATLAB to generate a file called myworkspace.mat. If I run this, you'll note that in the workspace I actually generate a file myworkspace.mat. In the uh, explorer window, you can actually see in the corner here that this mat file contains the variables integer y and string x with the values 5 and asdf as a string. So let's actually check that this worked. Let's clear the entire workspace again. You can see everything is cleared. And let's load the values in myworkspace.mat. And if you do that, we're exactly back where we started. So this is convenient if you want to save the state of your entire MATLAB system. So if you are running a complicated script and you want to save the workspace exactly as it is right now, fantastic. However, in practice, you'll often find that this is uh, uh, much too much information and you've really just wanted a small piece of it or the file would be much too large, say you're working with large data sets but you just want the final analysis. And in this case, what you want to do is only save a small piece of it. So let's go ahead and delete the uh, workspace file. And this time, let's just save the integer. The string is too much for us. So if I do that with this modification, so I saved the int y, and now when I load it, I only get the integer out. So this lets, lets us save a specific piece of the workspace. Now it may be that you don't necessarily want to just overwrite your current workspace. For example, if you're halfway through an analysis, you definitely don't want to just willy-nilly uh, overwrite everything. So I can, for example, actually not load to my current workspace but actually load that file as a structure in this case I'm going to save it to a variable called temp space and if we do that you can see that a variable temp space has been saved to my uh, workspace and if I look at temp space it has the integer y so I can for example now use integer y and I can even populate integer y back to my primary workspace and there you see it int y in my workspace saved once again. So this is uh, I would say the most convenient way to work with MATLAB data. Unfortunately this dot mat format is a proprietary format and while I imagine it isn't that hard to get the data out of it it isn't really set up in a way that you can easily get it into another program like Python. So for cases like this, we want to be able to save to a format that's easily loadable to another system. Uh, the simplest way to do that is actually uh, to create a, a, a comma-separated value list. Uh, this isn't the only way, but it makes it really easy to load the data. So there are two commands, CSV read and CSV write. So if we want to save our data to a CSV, 
These are by far the easiest ways to do it. I will add there's actually a second set of commands, table read and table write, which you may also want to look into for these purposes. But for the moment, let's just look at CSV read and CSV write. So CSV write, visible here, will write a comma separated value file uh, and it's going to do that to a matrix M. So uh, if you want to, uh, uh, if you just want to write a file, this will immediately dump it. You can also give it an offset so it doesn't read and write the entire file. One of the issues with this is that uh, the matrix M uh, won't necessarily uh, give you a clear description of what the rows are. So the second option I mentioned is uh, called table, write table, let's get my write table, yes there it is. So we have the other option here which is write table. So if you want to ensure that um, your uh, data is easily labeled, this may be another option for you, depending on how things are stored. So let's actually do one then the other. Um, so if I'm going to uh, save some values, so here let's get rid of our old ones, and I'm going to try and save two values, int y and int z. I'm going to make a matrix, uh, I'm going to call matr, which is equal to int y int z, and then I will write csv the file save csv.csv, and we will save to it the value matr. Oh, write csv. Oh, sorry, that should be csv, right? There we go. And there we get the value csv, right? Uh, and if you look in the uh, import editor that popped up, I can see I've got, oh, you can't see that on screen, two seconds. Here is the import. You can see that I was able to save successfully, save CSV with two variables, but you'll note that there's no labels in the file. So, and this is uh, also visible in the editor. We just got two values out. So probably the easiest way to save this separately. Actually, let's quickly go over how to load it. temp equals csv read save csv.csv. So if you wanted to reload that variable, here's your variable temp, and you need to remember that y was the first one and z was the second one. So your second option, if you don't want to go through uh, uh, writing the csv like this, is you could try actually making a table. So in this case, I'm going to make a table called my table. We're going to start it out empty. And then I'm going to populate it with two columns. And then we write table. like so. Oh. And row one, two columns. Let's double check how to use write table. Write table. Oh, I've got it in the wrong order. This is what happens when you don't edit your YouTube videos, guys. Okay. There we go. So you see save table, and if we load it, you can see this time we've got column labels. And the nice thing about this is you can read this straight back out. Save table.csv, and now temp conveniently has integer y and integer x loaded. So this was now in a format that you could open it and use it anywhere you wanted, either in MATLAB or in some other program. Uh, you had to put it temporary in, temporarily in a table. 
The main advantage I would say between tables and the CSV method is that the CSV method doesn't lend itself naturally to strings, whereas the table method does. So I can actually make a column of the table which has a cell array, uh, and that way save, say, um, for example, the state label if I was saving uh, a bunch of addresses, or I could save a name field. Whereas in a numeric array, that's, uh, uh, to my knowledge, not an easy uh, option. So this has been a short summary into how you can go around, uh, co about saving and loading data from MATLAB. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you like this type of content and you would like to see more, please uh, go ahead and subscribe. If uh, you liked the video and you found it helpful, I appreciate a like. And uh, if you have questions, comments, I am open to criticism, constructive or otherwise, please feel free to use the comments below. Thanks so much and have yourself a good day.